Welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. We have Dr. Austin Baraki in the studio, live, in the flesh. <laughs> That's real. Uh, he's in town uh, this week, and we decided to answer some questions from the internet. All right, what is the most interesting research you've read up on that is outside your normal scope? Uh, I will answer first while you... Ponder? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're like, wait, what's on my... <laughs> Let me go on my Twitter. That's right, yes. <laughs> uh, the most interesting research that I've read recently has to do with this gravitostat sort of mechanism with respect to like weight regulation. Okay. So they took these, uh, I, I can't remember if they're mice or rats, but they put a weight inside of them, like sewed yeah. a weight inside of them, and then uh, saw what happened to their body weight independent of that weight. And these, they lost weight because there's like this gravitostat mechanism. It's thought to be produced by a uh, hormone produced from the bones that interacts with areas of the hypothalamus to say, yeah, you don't need to eat as much because you weigh more now, <laughs> which I thought was super interesting. And then funnily enough, I think I said this or like hinted that I read this paper on one of our podcasts or YouTube, something like that. A researcher who works in the lab where they did this DM'd me. Oh, that's awesome. And well, yeah, and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> this is crazy. So that's that was so interesting. I remember reading the paper and I was like, what? Yeah. Turns out bones do stuff too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I think the challenging thing about this question is that it seems like we have a fairly wide scope. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> yeah. there's like a bunch of medical stuff, a bunch of training stuff, health health related things. Um, you know, what you're doing is technically that's like an obesity paper, which we sure, could say yeah. is within our, but anyway, it's interesting nonetheless. Sure. Um, there are there are a few. I think the one that I sent you recently that was a good paper. This isn't necessarily like uh, primary research, but a paper called Obesity and Responsibility. Oh, is yeah. it time to rethink agency? Um, strongly recommended read for folks, particularly those who are in the fitness space and tend to talk a lot about um, obesity and the extent to which it's um, a choice slash a, a personal success or failing, the extent sure. to which people can can manage it. Um, it's super complicated and interesting area of research. Another one that uh, uh, came up just actually, uh, I think it was yesterday or earlier today, um, there's some new uh, uh, studies being done um, on gene editing oh, for folks. Well, CRISPR? And, and, yeah, CRISPR and like related technologies. And I, and I think that that may end up being kind of the future of a lot of medical things. There's, um, they, they took a group of, I think it was primates of some sort, monkeys, and did some gene editing, uh, a single dose kind of treatment. It was like an infusion um, that that affected this gene editing process that led to durable lowering of their blood lipid levels oh, for like nine months or something like that. It didn't necessarily like skyrocket, but that was like the, the, the duration of follow-up. And so that would be, I mean, it, something like that to the extent that it could be done feasibly in humans that it was safe and you know uh, didn't have like off-target effects that were problematic, um, then uh, that would effectively end up being kind of like... It's like a lipid vaccine. It, kind of like a vaccine against cardiovascular disease, so to speak, which should... is the number one killer in the world uh, is cardiovascular disease. And so durable, uh, uh, long-term lowering of blood lipid levels with a single dose treatment would, you know, obviously there's, an ex there's a role for lifestyle you know, things managing obesity, exercise, nutrition in managing blood lipids. But for some people, for a lot of folks with genetic predispositions um, to elevated blood cholesterol levels, that's not necessarily enough to address their risk. And so in those situations, they end up needing to either take a daily medicine to address it or take, you know, uh, uh, like an injection or an infusion of some of the more advanced uh, newer agents. But if you could do something like once and it had like safe, lifelong, durable effects, that'd be kind of huge. So yeah. super interesting. This concept of gene editing, I think, is not going to go away. It'll be pretty interesting to see what where that goes in the future. We should workshop the name from like lipid vaccine or like heart Yeah, vaccine. that's not going to play well. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think one other thing that might be useful, or at least a, it's a question that we get all the time. Yeah. I don't know how useful it is. Okay. It's like, how do you get your research? So I know you're big on the on the Twitters. I'm big on medical and academic Twitter. That's really all I use Twitter for is, oh. is academicians, medical uh, educators like myself and researchers. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you get most of your papers from. Yeah. There's a handful. There are a handful that I like scour. So I go to the JSCR like every first of the month. I play Bone Thugs and Harmony. We go, we go. And then I go <laughs> check it. JSCR. I go to the ACSM's uh, website for the medicine and science and health and exercise. And then I go to the Frontiers website. Frontiers is good. Yeah. 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 And I just kind of peruse those. All the other stuff, I either get inboxed to me based on like keyword searches that I have mm -hmm. or like various medical newsletters or outlets that I've subscribed to. And that's enough. Like it's way more than stuff than I'll ever read. So I think my advice would be like pick one or two journals that you 
the content directly applies to you. Yeah. And then like, if you saw, happen to sign up for a newsletter or like a, you know, something like that, you'll get updates on, and you'll have more than enough to read. I remember it was like in residency, uh, intern year, they were like, you try to read one paper a day. Yeah. And I was like, how many, that, do you understand how many papers that would be in a year? <laughs> it's very hard. Yeah, like I would just be like, how many papers did you read this last quarter? And they'd yeah. be like, well, I'm gonna get to it. Yeah. All right, 